Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and I want to talk about masking in Luminar Neo. Which of the masking options do you use most often? I usually try Mask AI first, but if that doesn't get me the selection that I'm looking for, then I go to the Radio Gradient. So let me ask you this. Are you 100% sure how to use the Radio Gradient? Do you know how to add it? move it to the right place, adjust the fade, rotate it, and get it perfectly positioned on your image? Or do you just fumble around until it kind of falls into place somehow? Well, not to worry. If you're still playing the radial mask guessing game, then you need to keep watching. In this video tutorial, I'll give you my secrets to master the radial gradient in Luminar Neo. So if you're ready, let's get started. In this example image, let's say I would like to sharpen the yellow flowers to bring more attention to them, but not the rest of the image. So let's go to Structure AI and apply it quite liberally. I'm applying it really strong just so you can easily see the effect. Now let's go to the masking tools. If we try Mask AI, it's not going to give us what we want. The challenge here is that the entire image is flowers. So if we click on Flora, we get most of the image. So let's clear that and try Object Select instead. Now I can do one flower at a time and keep adding them until I have them all, but that's going to be a little bit tedious. There's a quicker way. Let's go back to the masking options and choose Radial Gradient. In its simplest form, a radial gradient is just a circle. You can adjust the placement, the size, and the feather or amount of fade on the edge of the gradient. Let's take a look. Right off the bat, Luminar gives you the instruction to get started. Click and drag to draw a gradient. So my first tip is to click the little crosshairs in the middle of where you want the radial gradient. In this case, about here on the flowers. So I'm going to click and start dragging. Now, if I stop there, I've got a circle. There's a few things you need to know about what you see on the screen now. Between the inner and the outer circle is the fade. The larger the gap between them, the more gradual the fade will be, meaning the effect will apply strong at 100% in the middle of the circle and at 0% outside. This area between the two circles is how quickly it changes. The dot in the middle allows you to grab it and move it around. The dots on the side allow you to change the shape so we can make it from a circle into an oval, which is more like what we want in this case. If I grab the other side, I can stretch it out again or continue to adjust the shape. If you hover your mouse on the edge of the circle, not near the dot, but on the edge, anywhere between the dots, you'll see this little icon appear with two arrows. That means if you click and drag here, you'll rotate it. If you want to adjust the fade so that it's stronger, hover your mouse over the outer circle. Now you'll see another two-edged arrow but this time it's straight. Click on the edge here and drag in to lower the amount of fade. Now the effect will drop off faster from the inside to the outside. And in this case, I think that that's okay. So you have to judge how much fade you want on a case-by-case -case basis per image. If you want more fade, just hover over the outside again until you get that straight two arrows and then drag out to make the fade larger. Now that I've made it smaller, the overall effect isn't big enough. So how do I make the whole thing bigger? Not to worry, just hover over the inner circle. You'll get the same little icon, a straight line with two arrows, but when you drag this one, click and hold, it makes the whole thing larger keeping it in the same place, position, and rotation. 
So I'm going to get close to the edge of the yellow flowers. Use the center dot once more to drag it down and position it like so. Then adjust the rotation as necessary and the size. So now the effect is going to be fully inside this inner circle, fade in between, and be clear on the outside. Let's apply it. If we do a before and after on this tool, you could see that that is indeed the case. Now we can go back to adjustments and refine the amount sliders to taste, like so. But let's say we're still not quite happy with the selection. This is where you can go back to masking and this time use a brush to refine it. If you want to see the mask, remember you just have to go to the bottom and click show. Then the mask will stay on the entire time. Now I can choose to erase from any areas of overspill, like this tulip here and this pink one, like so, and paint into any areas that I missed, like down here. So you can use the radio gradient in combination with the other methods of masking. For me, the most common is radial gradient and then the brush just to do a few little tweaks. I have one more example and some bonus tips for you. But before I do that, I just want to tell you about something special that I have happening over on my DPM community. On Tuesday, June the 3rd at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, I have a special webinar available on 10 portrait mistakes you need to avoid but it's for community members only. So if you'd like to access the webinar, all you have to do is join our community. It's only $9 a month. Your initial commitment is three months, but you can cancel anytime after that. Even if you only stick around in the community for a little while, there's tons of value for your money. Not only will you get the webinar that you can find here under the live events, but you'll also get to see the recording of this one and all of our past webinars. For example, there's five currently. You could go watch how to do better travel photos, learn to make composite images, get tips for your night photography, HDR, and learn about photography etiquette. Each of these webinars is at least two hours packed full of information. But that's not all you get. As a member, we have weekly events, photography challenges monthly with a valuable prize, and the biggest thing of all is a place to share and discuss photography in a safe environment with like-minded individuals. There's no ads, no spammers, and no nastiness. If you've ever been in a photography group on Facebook, you know what I'm talking about. I'll put a link for you to check out the community information below. I recommend reading some of the reviews of current members to see why they find it so valuable. Now let's get back to masking. Before I finish with this image, let's do one more thing. I'm going to go back to masking, go to the bottom and copy this mask. Now I've got it refined how I like it on the yellow flowers. I want to be able to use it on other tools. So all you have to do is get your mask right once. Now I'm going to close the tool and then I'm going to go down to the blur tool and have a little fun. I'm going to try a twisted blur and put it in the center of, of the yellow flowers. Now I just need to apply this mask by pasting it in. And then of course I need to invert it so it's on the background or the outside part. Now you can see it's creating a twirl effect. And once again, we can go back and use the brush to either paint in areas that I want to have a little bit more blur or erase it from parts that are blurry that I want to have sharp, like the tips of the yellow tulips here. Now I have a very abstract kind of image. If you want to go with just a subtle Gaussian blur, the mask works equally well here. There we go. So really quickly using the radial gradient, we sharpened the yellow flowers while simultaneously blurring the others. Let me show you one more example. On this image of the surfer, I've just done a quick crop 
and erased a few of these white highlights at the top. You'll see why in a minute. I'm going to do something similar with this one. This time though, I'm going to use Enhance AI because I really want to punch up the surfer and the splash. But what's happening here is it's applying to the background as well. And I want the background to be minimized. So we need to mask it. This is another one where Mask AI doesn't pick up the subject as I want it. We can select the human and it does pretty good there. But when I choose water, look what happens. It's not really making the best choice. So I'm going to undo those and go straight to the radial gradient. Once again, I just need to draw a large circle. And in this case, I'm going to make it quite oval to cover most of the surfer and the splash. Adjust the fade a little bit narrower. So I want to get this splash and the board. So I need to make it a bit bigger this way and this way. You'll notice I can get close, but I can't get this top part up here and the majority of the splash here at the same time. So I'm either going to have to use the brush to do some additional masking. Maybe I'll fade this a little bit more. There we go. Or I have another trick for you. Watch what happens if we just close the radial gradient and then open it again. Now we get the familiar dialogue to draw gradient. And when I draw up here, it adds it to the existing mask. How cool is that? Now I can just adjust it to fit this area and blend it in with my existing selection. Let's see how close that is. Looks pretty good, right? Now I'm going to go back and copy this mask so that I can use it again to blur. Copy, back down to the blur tool. This time I'm gonna use a motion blur and make sure it's going side to side, which is angle zero, because I want it to look like the water is going by side to side. Now we can go into mask and paste. Of course, once again, we need to invert it. And then I just need to adjust a little bit once more using the brush. I want to get a bit more of the outside of the water over here. Oops, my mistake. Let's undo that and make sure we're erasing because I don't want the water blurred. I forgot that we had inverted the mask. So now I'm just going to make sure that I get the edges. I want all the splashes sharp. Now I'm just blending the edge a little bit. Likewise over here. Now we can see the before and after on the blur tool and the complete before and after. Look at how much more the surfer stands out and pops in this image. So there you have it, the radial gradient. Will you use this one more often now? I hope you find these tips helpful. Remember, if you'd like to come to the next webinar, check out the information in the description area below. If you missed the portrait one, there'll be another one coming in the community soon. And in the meantime, you can catch up on all the previous ones by watching the recordings. If you'd like to get more Luminar Neo tips and tricks, watch one of the videos on the screen now. Until next time, keep practicing and I'll see you soon.